Hello and welcome to the Counterpoint Podcast. You can be gay. I just realized I did not have a quote from the movie ready, and I had this the first one that came to mind. <laughs> um, I'm Brendan here with Luke. It'd be me and Jonathan. Hello. Um, yeah. So I've been doing that quote thing, <laughs> and then yeah. I realized I was like, I didn't do it for Tenet. And I was like, oh wait, there are no quotes in Tenet. <laughs> Uh, anyway, I mean, you, could, you could technically <laughs> quote anything. Sure, sure. Nothing worth quoting. You should have. You should have said, uh, uh, "Don't try to, don't try to understand it." Uh, that's fair. I didn't have the idea at the time. Oh, okay. Uh, anyway, today we're talking about Moonlight. Um, before we get into it, as always, Luke, short and sweet. How do you feel about this movie? Um, I don't exactly know how to feel about this movie because there's, you know, I like the characters. Well, it wouldn't did, did you shorten and sweet. <laughs> Doesn't know how to feel about it. That's it's okay. Fine. That's an A. It's fine. Jonathan, I didn't. It, how do you feel? I really movie? liked it. I thought it was a. Uh, I thought it was artful and uh, had an excellent story. Characters were great. Um. Yeah, I also really liked this. I thought it was great. This is a great pick. It's a good movie. Did not did not know it won an Oscar. Found that out after I watched it. I was like, that makes sense. It's a good movie. That was one of the reasons why I knew like about it. Yeah, it has an Oscar vibe about it for sure. I am a sucker for Oscar vibe movies. Um. So yeah, it but, totally deserves it. What did it win the Oscar in? Do you know? Uh, what it's it, it won for uh, best picture. Mm, yeah. Uh, Mahershala Ali also won for uh, supporting actor. Mm-hmm. He's great. I I. Love him in I think everything. Everybody, I've seen oh yeah, I mean yeah. the cast of this movie is great. I'm just saying, Maharshal Ali. I'd love him in everything. Yeah. And yeah. the first thing I saw him in was not a good show, and I still enjoyed <laughs> him. Um. Yeah, I, I don't know. What, does anybody have anything specific they want to get into first? Uh, I mean, sure. I thought, like, uh, cinematography wise, like just the lighting and the camera work in this film was so excellent. Like it enhanced everything about this movie. Like the one shot when um, Chiron was like in the car when he was a kid and um, they took him to their, their fancy house for the first time. And like the camera was in the backseat of the car. Mm -hmm. Like it wasn't like a a perspective shot, but it was almost like it. And if anything, I thought that that made it even better because it like it felt like you were in that moment, like intruding on his moment, just like and like every scene in this movie, I felt like so in that I, I felt like I was in it, like personally, like watching a a moment in this person's life. Jonathan, like, in that in that moment, I was very confused. This is something that confused me throughout the entire movie. Oh yeah, uh, and the, and I'm gonna let you know what it is throughout the entirety of the movie. I couldn't get a grip on what the time period was. Because in that moment, there were cars from like 2019. Or 2016. Well, I, I think it's just supposed to be early 2000s, probably. Well, that's what I thought. But they they have a CRT. And so does Juan, correct? I just, I thought that it was uh, like... Mm, not early 2000s, but like, yeah, I guess early 2000s, but I'm just talking like 2010-ish. But then you go into the future and there's a jukebox from, and I suppose, you know, you can just have a place with older stuff. Well, yeah, that, that was just an older diner. I don't think yeah. that's significant. But he was he was using at his house a landline. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I get, I, I don't know. I got the feeling that... Um, adult Chiron was supposed to be set in 2016 and everything else sort of goes back about 10 years. Yeah, that seems about right. I also just, as far as the cinematography, I thought, you know, for the most part, it was really good. It was great. I wouldn't say that it was perfect. I uh, spotted towards the end of the movie in the final scene um, when he goes into the building at night, it's clearly shot during the day, like when they go to the interior of that. Uh, I forget what his name is. Kevin. Sharon's love interest. Is it Kevin? Yeah. Yeah. Sharon's love interest. 
I thought that he just went in like uh like when the sun was setting and then he just spent enough time there like waiting well, for just, Kevin they, to get off work. They had just gotten home because Kevin takes off his uh his shirt. It's like, oh I gotta get rid of this. Oh, you're talking about like when he went to his house. Oh, okay. Yeah, at the very end. Oh. Yeah. I just say this is this is a dumb thing. Once I saw his name written, I hated his name. Who <laughs> Sharon? Yes. <laughs> because it, it's spelled like Chiron, who is the ferryman of the dead in Greek mythology. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah that's, uh, I, I really like the cinematography in this movie overall. There's only one sequence that I thought was mismatched with what was going on. Um, oh, yeah? And that's the very start of the movie when you're following uh, Juan as he goes to talk to... I, I don't even know if that character has a name. The guy who's dealing on the street. Yeah, yeah. Um, Basically. And so, like, the, the guy who's dealing on the street has this super nervous energy, and then the shot is, like, swirling, you know, like, it's turning around them, and, like, it, it, it gives this impression that something's gonna happen. That's this entire movie, though. At every point, I thought that something really messed up was about to happen. But, but everything else, like, all, everything else, I feel like the cinematography, for the most part, matched up, and it was pretty good. It was just that one time that I was like, this is weird. I do agree, but... uh I think that that's like maybe I'm reading into it, but like to me, that just kind of felt like how it feels to be, you know, doing something that high stakes. Like you know, you could be busted at any moment. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, true. So, just, so I thought I thought it was like putting you in the moment of like, yeah, this is and their I, life, I, but you're tense for some reason. I don't let me let me get this straight, Juan. It, it also made him clearly he's like a chill dude mm -hmm. compared to his uh, the guy under him. You know what I mean? He's just. Hey, what's going on? Yeah. yeah. Which I think was meant to set him up as kind of being a chill dude. Yeah. With that being said, early on in this movie, I mean, obviously, you know, things transpire off screen, but I definitely thought like Juan was going to end up like maybe taking advantage of Chiron. Like in some way, I, that's what I looked like the whole time with like the scene with the water where he goes in the water. I was getting like drowning vibes from the way it's shot. Interesting. I, I never had any suspicion of malfeasance on, on Juan's part. Like it was pretty yeah. clear that this is like the good element in his life. Uh, uh, yeah. I was about to Teresa. say, like, also, I think that that's kind of like what this movie, like one of the themes is just like, um, you know, like, drug use is sort of depicted like in both of its lights of how destructive and terrible it can be but then like why people would do it because it clearly you know has brought Juan up to uh you know like rise above to some sort of like you know status of some yeah. sort like you know like he he's he's gotten out of poverty because of it and then like because of that he can be a positive influence but then also just like the destructive ways that it could do so i think that it was like really intentional of just like how good of a person he was so i don't know i didn't get that vibe i felt like this movie filled was filled with anxiety in a lot of in a lot of places and it, and it obviously i will say during his first uh two moments you know as a as a kid and as a teenager yeah, the first two acts are, are supposed to be anxious. Anxiety is palpable. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's supposed to be anxious. You know, it reminded me of um, Joker in that sense because, like, that was another movie where it just kind of like put you on edge the whole time, where nothing was like really going on. Just That's like one thing though is I had I had kind of thought the whole time like something is about to happen, and I mean in Joker, kind of at the end something happens, but yeah, in this in this movie, this is one of the reasons why I can't consider it like the best movie ever mm -hmm. but like it i was expecting there to be like a conclusion but it just wasn't you know well i i think the payoff of the anxious vibe of the first two acts is the end of the second act when he gets beat up and then snaps yeah and then i think the anxious vibe is it's gone. Like it, I, I didn't feel any sort of anxious tones in the third act. There was definitely, yeah. Um, I yeah, think that I I think was, was gone as well. Uh, one of the things I really liked of this movie was uh, the economy of storytelling. Like, with the exception of 
the first scene, but even that's setting up Juan's character. Um, like, there's no scene that is irrelevant to what is trying to be told. Um, and and I think in a worse movie, we would have gotten scenes that weren't necessary. So, like, we're told Juan dies. We don't see it. We don't go to his funeral. And we don't have someone in the third act yelling at Chiron saying, you turned yourself into Juan to be a big man or whatever. It's like, that. these are all... Like, obviously, Juan's death would affect him, and it did, but we don't need to see it for what's being told. And the fact that he turned himself into Juan is obvious because it's his father figure. And, like, to be told that would have made it worse. So, like, there's yeah. a lot of, like, they, they didn't waste time in this movie. And uh, yeah. I thought that was good. Uh, good uh... <laughs> everybody's out of things <laughs> no i mean i think we all have more to say but it's just like where to jump in at you know <clears throat> uh, i mean like all of the cast was was pretty phenomenal um naomi harris is the mother uh, uh, Teresa. i couldn't figure out why i recognized her um i was like i don't think i've seen her in any movies it's because she's a she's a singer Joe Monet. yeah um, my favorite being Mahershala Ali as Juan, who is only in the first act and is still like the standout yeah, top, for me in the movie. Like, literally crazy. top billing. Mm. The the scene at the the dinner table was great. Yeah, I mean, all of the actors in this killed it. Mm. Yeah. My problem with this movie is that I just didn't... For me, there wasn't a lot going on. I know that's, like, the point of the movie. Yeah, really? it's, it's a small movie in focus. Like, it's it's not about something huge happening. It's about the internal struggles of this one person. Yeah. I don't know. I never got the vibe that, like, not a lot was going on. Because I felt like a lot was going on with that one person. Like, that was, like... I don't know. I think that this was a great piece of... Uh, it's like it's basically like a character piece, uh, and, and it's all about obviously it's all about Chiron because you know it's like three part his life, and it did it really like well because normally I don't like when they split up, uh, time for one person like for one character, I just normally like one of the the time frames stands out like as the best in the movie and and for this one I think actually that just wasn't true like every single period of his life explain the next and like the point of the story was his final you know part in life that we saw so for that like for that reason i don't know i just never felt like it was not much going on because i i truly wanted to see where it was going like what what story were they going to tell with what was happening with him yeah i was just expecting like either more acceptance at the end with kevin or um like a you know, a shouting match or something. And it just, it just never happened. You know what I mean? Well, that's actually another thing I liked about the movie is, is at the yeah. end, it wasn't like Chiron wasn't hung up on Kevin or in love with him. It was just, it was about his repression of who he is. Like, so yeah. when he said, you're the only man who's ever touched me, it wasn't like, you're the only man I ever loved. It's like, I, I don't know how to be me. Yeah. yeah. I agree with that. But then again, you know, Kevin says essentially the same thing uh, beforehand, just in a, you know, obviously he's less repressed, but the choices he's made in life uh, beyond um, his sexuality, he made to like please other people. It's kind of what the vibe from Kevin I got. I mean, that's like the point of the movie too. And like, yeah. that's the point of the third act is not, it, really like you showed... They showed who he was like, who you thought he was going to turn into. And then the person who he did turn into wasn't what you expected. And then uh, Kevin calls him out on it. Like that's like that, that for me was payoff. The moment where he finally broke down and was like, hey, he basically, he didn't say it, but he was just like, you're right. Um, this kind of is a front and I'm still, I still think about that moment because that moment was more me than this. Yeah, like that 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 was like the release of the entire movie. I thought that that was like a perfect 
way to end it. Uh, I think any more would have been too. Um, I don't know. It, it would have just. It would have taken away. It would have made it about something. It would have made it less about the character and more about um, a uh, like a society thing, which isn't bad per se. Mm -hmm. But I, I think, think that this movie was a that. character piece. But yeah, I, I absolutely, it was a character piece. Yeah, I, I really like the ending because it, it mirrors what Juan tells him at the start because he he took that advice the wrong way. Hmm. And then, you know, at the end, when he is just being held by Kevin, you know, you see the shot of him as a child in the moonlight because yeah. he is finally understanding. Heck yeah. Great film. Yeah, it was really good. Now you're sad because uh, I didn't choose a bad movie. <laughs> yeah that's true that's true it's interesting i don't know that i'd watch this movie again but mostly just because it's a horribly depressing movie yeah yeah and it literally like i said it brought me anxiety watching it like wondering what was going to happen to him i also like i love movies like this but i'm so bad at watching them because i uh like I physically like cringe like to the point where like i can't watch like i actually just can't watch the movie at multiple points in this, I was just like, ah, this is too personal. Like, I'm in this person's life, and I don't belong here. <laughs> but I love it. Like, I love movies like that. I, I think was, that that's like, a, a success on what this I, was trying to here's do. Here's the thing. I, I feel like this did uh, different from what people were expecting of this movie. Because I think people were expecting. And even though, like, obviously, Chiron is a victim, mm -hmm. he wasn't... Uh, treated like that throughout the story like the whole time me being anxious about what was going to happen to him you know while he did still uh like he was repressed and everything it wasn't like you know i, I thought he was going to get like murked or something so hmm. and that's kind of the vibe i got yeah I, I thought the movie handled everything like it didn't like play into any cliches exactly Yes. It was, it was just like it was just a good story. Still for me, it was it the the Oscar vibes were a lot. You don't like Oscar vibes? I oh, don't. Oh, did you think it did you think it leaned into Oscar bait? I think it did a little bit. Huh. But again, I don't think it was it was not a bad movie. I liked it. I don't think I loved it. But so yeah. sometimes I, I think Oscar vibes are, are too much for me. Um, I, I knew this was an adapted story, though. Yeah, it's from a book. And I, I've heard it's fairly faithful. I, I didn't get, like, I mean, obviously there are Oscar vibes. Because it is, you know, an emotional character piece type story. But I, I don't think it was so egregious. Like, it, it didn't pull me out of it at any point. So what about Oscar vibes don't you like, though? It's just when a movie is so clearly just pandering for an Oscar. It's like, you didn't make this to make a movie. You made this... Yeah. To win an award and i feel like this was made to make a movie and tell a story i agree like i think that um if something has oscar vibes i don't think it should deserve an oscar that doesn't actually happen a lot of like like i haven't even seen la la land but just like hearing what it's about and like oh dear god of course you got la la land right i have huh? not seen la la land either i think that this movie came out around the same time and didn't uh, la la land is yeah la la land's the same year i think I'm yeah, glad that this beat it out. Um, yeah. This one, this one didn't sacrifice anything. Like here. all of all of the artistic shots served the narrative perfectly. So, yeah. So this took best picture. La La Land is in the same category. La La Land took best director, which Barry Jenkins, the director of Moonlight, was nominated for. Um, I already said Mahershala Ali took best actor, best supporting actor. Sorry. Um, Moonlight was not nominated for Best Actress. It was nominated for Best Supporting Actress, but didn't win. I don't know if La La Land won anything else. Original score it won. Which, actually, the music in this movie was really good. I agree. Yeah. Um, did not win. <laughs> did not win based on that. Uh, La La Land I took Best Cinematography. I don't think it was like music. It's your name. So. <laughs> really? Interesting. Um... Yeah, it looks like Moonlight only won two categories. Oh, no, sorry, it won three. It won Best Adapted Screenplay as well. Um, La La Land won quite a few. <laughs> I 
I have not seen La La Land. Nor have I. I've heard I mostly not. good things. Yeah, I don't know. Everything that I've heard about it has just been like, oh, oh, okay. Not like, it's just like, it seems like it would, I don't like movies about LA that like are successful because of that, I guess. Is that why it's called La La Land? Yeah, it's just like everything <laughs> LA, about LA it. LA Land? Yeah, that is what the IMDb page says while navigating their careers in Los Angeles. Oh, Arrival was the same year. This is a good year. <laughs> That's good. Never movie. seen that movie either. Oh, it's really good. Never seen Arrival? It's really good. Oh, we'll have to do that one. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I, this this was a really good movie. Um, it, I, I think the small focus is, is to its benefit. Like, the fact that I think if he had been killed in an act of violence or anything, it would have taken away from the movie. I agree. Which is what I was kind of like cringing. Part of myself was like, oh, it's going to be. Oh, you thought that they were going to. That's interesting that they didn't do what you were fearing that they would. And yet you're still not like on board with it, it seems. I mean, like I said, it's a good movie. Mm -hmm. I don't think it was a movie. I would not watch this movie again. I would watch this again. I don't think like. This this isn't a movie that I would watch again, like to feel good. I would only like, watch I would, this again if I was showing it to someone. I feel exactly. That's that's what I'm. That's where I'm at. But that's that doesn't make it a bad movie. I no, think no, that no. it just makes it uh, successful at what it's trying to do. Because like this movie genuinely I, makes I me mad true. about society and like about I don't know the human condition in, in some sense. But like that is a success in my books. Yeah. So. You can't fault the movie for that, you know. It, it did exactly what it wanted to do. Hmm. Yeah. My vibes for it is again, it's it's a good movie. Now, now I didn't find that it was amazing, but interesting. What what held it back for you from being amazing? Uh, there just wasn't a lot going on especially once the, i felt like the first act i feel like you you were like oh well, there's different acts that are better and it's like no the one with juan was the best and oh, then so you I, did feel like act, the second act was good but i felt like the third act was kind of empty i i agree i think the third act is the weakest but i think the first and second are both phenomenal i think the first and second are phenomenal i think the third is the weakest but that's where all the payoff lies yeah yeah, yeah. I, i'm not i'm not even yeah. saying the third is bad i just think it's the weakest right right and I like, just, I, I could in, the, in the first one, you know, if there was, if there was one thing I would, and maybe I just missed it, like that, obviously, maybe like, obviously he was gay as a kid, but like, to me, I didn't see that. I just saw, you know, obviously he was asking like, am I gay? You know? <laughs> well, I think I, it's the point of the, I, the bathroom scene. The bathroom scene? Yeah. Where they're you all mean, comparing their dicks. Was that before or after, though? I feel like that was after. Maybe I'm wrong. That was after, but also, like... Like, maybe that scene should have been before him asking, just because I feel like it would have just been... Like, he... Like, why would he ask that question? I don't know. Well, well, well that's, that's the thing. Having, Hold on. Why would he ask that question if he wasn't already thinking about it? I, I, I never already, walked up to my parents and said, am I gay? <laughs> But this is what I'm trying to get at: is that think, he, think, like you sh he should have shown the director should have shown the character like I find this attractive, and then someone were to call him that, and then he goes, "Well, he was anyway," but not because of any reason. He was just called it as like a derogatory term. But he might have been called it for a reason. Maybe but it, also, it also does. They do specifically say that he was called, like, he was labeled as soft and gay because of the way that he walks. But I never thought that he walked like, yeah, no. like he walked he super walked. normal. Exactly. Oh, I do. I do see what you're saying. Do you know what? You know what other scene there is that I think was supposed to have some level of like awakening for him is um, Kevin fighting him to to like help him toughen up. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I think at that point for sure. But, but that, that, that's that, before the conversation with Juan. Was it? I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure it was. I think it was. Because I'm pretty sure we meet Juan, Juan finds him at the dope house, 
He takes him home the next morning. He goes to school, and that's when the fight happens. And then the next time he goes to Juan's house is the, uh, okay. the discussion I, I about sexuality. There, were, there should have been like a look. You know what I mean? Something. More... I do. I do agree, but also like he's a kid. Like yeah. I don't think I don't think that there was yeah. any way that he knew at that point. Yeah, and, and Juan even says that he's like, you don't have to know right now. Yeah. yeah. And of course, that's that's fine. And also, I think that I don't know. I kind of disagree with you on that because I think that if they had made it very obvious, then it would have uh, sort of taken away from the movie because you know life but is. Like time, as soon as you said it, it's like I already knew this movie was not showing anything that wasn't um, important. No, you you knew, but the point is his struggle with it. Yeah, he doesn't I, know. He didn't know. Yeah. If they showed him fucking popping a bone or seeing a dude like he would know <laughs> would he though i don't think that's necessarily he, true. he would know a bit better than he did at nine years old or whatever when he was asking that question yeah but also like i think that um i think a nine-year-old doesn't... i think it didn't matter it didn't matter in the first act if he knew no he made it very obvious in the second act that he did without yeah. saying anything i don't think he needed to know in the first act the point was he was starting to have this idea of it and i think that the the importance of like them labeling him as that was that it was uh it was unfair like regardless of if he was or wasn't the reasons that they were saying it was Actually, like the fact that he didn't know just proves that um, they were just saying it to say it. Like, yeah, that's definitely it, true. It could have it could have turned out that he wasn't, and it would have been a different movie. But uh, you know, the first act could have been the exact same. Uh, so I think that the point of the first act wasn't about his sexuality yet. Okay, I mean, I'll, I'll accept that. But also, while it is the foremost thing, the homosexual homosexuality isn't the only. Uh, thing right there's also the uh, expectation of masculinity that yeah i feel like that was the bigger portion but that also goes along and especially in different cultures like that is part of your expectation of masculinity right but that is another thing he was you know he was struggling with because yeah i think that was a bigger thing that he was struggling with as a kid uh mm -hmm. Certainly, like at like nine years old, yeah, I would say when he's a teen, it's probably a fairly equal struggle. No, oh, yeah, for sure. I'm just saying, like, I thought we were talking about him as nine. My bad. Yeah, I just love how they don't like explain it though. Like the fact that we can interpret it is just like makes the movie the better for it. I feel like that's one thing that uh, a lot of movies will try to be like Moonlight, in which they'll like they'll try to talk about important issues and then they'll just completely miss the point because they'll just hammer your your head in they'll be like this is what this is about and it just kind of ruins it you know yeah i mean at the same time i kind of felt a little bit of hammering oh really i did not yeah. feel hammered Especially, i just felt like the dweeby like at high school kid who's unsure of himself getting like picked on is such a it, that's the only cliche that i saw I will say that's not a cliche I usually see. But, uh, but that's a thing that happens. Though. Not, not. I can see what you're getting at, but like also it was sort of preordained, like by everybody else. Like when he was nine, like he was picked on in, in such a way that you there's no way that you can get out of it. The only way to do it is to be disingenuous, which is what they showed when he was an adult. Was he was like I reinvented myself. If he had reinvented himself when he was a teen, you make, you make a point. Yeah. So, like, I mean, it, the story could have went that way, but I think as a teen, he was trying to be more true to himself. Also, it was clear he was going through a lot, regardless of his struggles. Yeah, I mean, the obviously, fact that his mom, struggles. yes, and the fact that Juan died, like, yeah, I that think really that regardless, him. on some level, he would be that kid. Like the fact that he wasn't uh, okay. And you know you you have to be okay in in high school here. You know what I mean. I uh, I also really liked that uh, in the third act when he's trying to be like Juan and he's he's talking to the kid who who deals for him. He's so fucking bad at it. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. He's horrible. Like teasing this kid in a in such a threatening way. 
and then she'd be like nah i'm just kidding it's like holy shit <laughs> i i literally thought like i thought the count was off and he so was going I. going to do something about it and then he's like nah i'm just playing I'm like oh god he's really bad at this i was confused actually because like i was like oh shit also i thought that that kid was uh kevin <laughs> to be a little young. I was like, why is he bullying kevin and i was like oh that's not kevin, my bad oh uh, I understand why they showed Kevin as an adult, like before he actually saw him. Mm -hmm. But there was another thing. Because I, uh, for a little bit there, I'm like, who is this person? Like, it was weird that he had a wet dream about Kevin before he'd ever seen him. I don't know. Facebook was around then, eh? I mean, I, 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 I don't know. I legitimately. Well, don't yeah, know. Facebook would have been around. I guess he has his cell phone, but then Kevin is using like a dirty old, like, push, whatever. I don't even know what kind of phone you call that, but. What, a flip phone? No. Yeah, I, I wonder if this movie's supposed to take place in 2016 or if it's supposed to take place when the uh, the original story was written. It's, it's just, I think just because of the budget, they weren't able to like period piece the movie correctly. So it just kind of. And that was something that because it definitely does have some older vibes. It does. You have you I have sort of won me on this point of like now that we're getting into the nitty gritty of it, it's like you're right. Wait a minute. <laughs> like at multiple moments, I'm like, this is happening in 2005, and then. But it has a real like early 90s vibe at times as well. It does. It does. But yeah. It's other, it's so the, the original time. story. Uh, three acts, rough Miami neighborhood across the late eighties, early nineties. It looks like nineteen eighties Miami. You know, it yeah. is when it starts. But the so cell like, phone is it, like, yeah, but they have cell phones and the cars are newer. And also, like, in uh, that's I think I guess I you're think, supposed to ignore that. I think it's just because this movie what had a one point five million dollar budget. I saw four million. Was it one point five? I th I thought I saw one point five somewhere, but you might be right. Either way, with even a four million budget, yeah, dollar not budget, a huge budget. You can't period piece something perfectly, mm -hmm. but it just it threw me off because I was like, "Oh, this is happening in the mid '80s, late '80s," and then uh, I don't know why that bothers me so much about movies when when I don't know what the time period is. But, I guess that's fair. Everybody has their things, you know? But like a, a nebulous time period doesn't really bother me, unless it's a relevant point. And then it's like, if, if they're like, oh yeah, this movie takes place in the 70s, and they explicitly say it, and they bust out an iPhone, it's like, well, I mean, with fuck the, you. With the homophobia, I can tell you right now, it definitely didn't take place today to the same degree. Because, like, even though there's still homophobia today with kids, it's it's not the same as it was in the 90s. Or they? Oh, no, no, yeah. I think uh, the, the most recent you could say for this movie is that adult Chiron is 2016, which would make yeah. kid him 2000. Uh, yeah, like yeah, something Probably like that. Probably like 1990 something. D depending on how old you think he is. No, because he's eight or nine. So if he's like 24, yeah, it's like 2000. Okay. And you that, gotta you gotta factor in like yeah, they have a CRT. Uh, CRT TV. Yeah, I, like, I think it's supposed to take place. You know, I think it's supposed to take place 80s, 90s, and they just they used the cell phones they had. They didn't bother with the cars because it cost a fuck ton of money to yeah. do that with the cars. And I, I think that's fine. I, I don't think that's really an issue. Yeah, you know, it's, it's kind of funny though. They'll they'll put up uh, like public. So there's like acting sites. They will literally put up uh, like an acting job, but then they'll just say like, "Do you have a car from this era?" <laughs> That's how they. That's how some some things period piece. That's insanity. Yeah, I get it, but well, wow. it's sort of like a Craigslist, but for actors, like Actors Access, and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Some some little uh, some little factoid right there. So, are we doing the scores? Is it that time? Does, does anybody have anything else? I mean, I I do want to say this is uh, a small thing. The, the poster for this movie is great. I don't know if you that guys was, have seen uh, it. The split of all three of them? Yeah. 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 And the way, it definitely, they, they've cut it so that they're all, like, all the same. Mm. You know, it's funny. Uh, movie, oh, though. You guys, have you guys like seen... when, they, when he became an adult, and that was kind of the point, but when he became an adult, you're like, 
what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Have you guys seen Boyhood? No. Uh, that's the movie that like they uh, they kept the actors that they had, and they like uh, it, it takes place over like a fourteen year span, and they mm. literally just called the actors back like multiple times in their lives. I feel like this movie did that better without like having that stick. But at the same time, that it was... did the three part story better. Yeah. You better yeah. have a kid actor that is absolutely fucking amazing. <laughs> like, yeah. If you have them also be the adult, one, yeah. adult actor, yeah. Yeah. All right, we jumping into the scores. Uh, yeah. Luke, what'd you get this movie? I'm bouncing between an eight and a seven. <sighs> Gotta choose one. <laughs> I'm gonna have to give it a seven. Okay, Jonathan, what would you give it? I would give it a nine. Okay, it's uh, closer to an eight, closer to an eight than a ten, but a nine. Uh, yeah, I think I'm. I think I'm on an eight. Um, let's see. What is it? What does that give it? That gives us an aggregate eight for our scores. Not as high as your name. Um. Yeah. I felt like they're complete two completely types different types of movies. For sure. I think your name gets extra points because you might want to rewatch it just for the feels goods. Your name gets yeah, extra points because Luke is a weeb. <laughs> what? An extra <laughs> point because a weeb. Who? I said because you're a weeb. Jonathan, you weeb. <laughs> Me. I gave them both the same rating. Uh, this is the second highest rated movie we've covered now. Nice. Yeah, I, I don't know. Does anybody have anything else they want to they want to say? It's better than Tenet. That's for damn sure. I would yes. say that uh, if you're like debating on checking out a movie and you're like between your name and this one, I think that this one is more worth checking out. Like this one is like one that will. I sort of agree. Go. Yeah. I think it depends on what you Luke want to won't feel. agree. <laughs> <laughs> no, it depends on what you want to f- if you want to feel. That's fair. I just mean like I'm broadening your horizons. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with that. Yeah, absolutely. Because you see uh, the perspective of someone who internally you may never see. Yeah. Absolutely. That's all I had to say. (laughs) Yeah, I I guess we're good. Um, So yeah, Uh, next week is my pick. I haven't decided yet. I'm between two movies still. Oh, are we teasing them with the movie uh, pick again? Uh, did you say the movies last week? I don't remember. I did. Okay, okay. I, I can say them. Uh, I am between the, what, like, 05 Tim Burton movie Big Fish. I think it's 05. 03, holy shit. Uh, and a movie called Coherence, uh, which is very good to go into blind. Um. And I think I'm leaning towards coherence because Luke has seen Big Fish. Yeah, and uh, to be fair, I probably saw it when I was like 12. So Yeah, I've seen both of these movies a couple times, so it, it doesn't matter I for me. Uh, look up on IMDb <laughs> anything about... Because I'm glad I didn't look up anything uh, about Moonlight. Yeah, I think, it's, I think it's nice to go in sort of blind with these movies. Yeah. Um, kind of depends, though. Like, I don't mind rewatching stuff. Yeah, yeah, no, no, for sure. But uh, yeah, so I, I think I'm leaning towards coherence. Um, so long as you guys don't look anything up and spoil it. Um, I think it's a great movie. And the reason I want to pick it is because I don't remember if it was during the Snowpiercer episode or the Tenet episode. We talked about dialogue in movies and how sometimes it just feels like it's dialogue to push something. It doesn't feel like people talking. It's probably Tenet. Um, <laughs> I mean, just honestly, that's how that movie was. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and this movie has, I think, like very real, like it actually feels like people are just having a conversation at points, uh, which I think is cool. Yeah, probably coherence next week. But uh, anyway, does anybody have anything they want to sign off with? Yeah, I mean, to say that, you know, I felt that in this movie. The dialogue was good? No, no, no. I felt... Like at times the dialogue was really good and it was realistic, but at other times I definitely felt like it was to push something. Like I feel like specifically Chiron's mom 
I don't know if any, if you could tell, or maybe I'm just wrong, but it, it felt like she was really, she enunciates her words a lot. She wouldn't be using some of the Ebonics that she did to the extent that she did. You could just tell her actual accent was like not from the Miami area. You know what I mean? I mean, that's not like dialogue that's pushing anything. That's I mean, just it was accent. just like... That was one thing that I noticed when she's like eyes be and I'm like, dude, she would not like I can just tell by the way she's talking. She was like fucking Shakespearean trained or some shit. You know, I'm like uh, name Harris is from London. So, yeah. And her her, uh, her parents are from Jamaica or something. Ooh, or at least one way, of her parents was the way she was talking. I was just like, ah. Oh. Like I, I it, it graded on me because I'm like I can tell this is not how she actually talks, and I would rather her have been uh, obviously not like a UK accent because would just well it wouldn't destroy the movie it wouldn't it wouldn't have mattered. I don't actually know what her normal accent is because the only thing I can recall her in off the top of my head right now is uh, Pirates of the Caribbean where she's Calypso <laughs> and she's doing the very like you know the very over the top. Well, here you go. I'm listening to a an interview. This is the longest sign off we've ever had. This is a long sign off. This well, is we a short episode, though. Do I don't know if you heard any. No, of that. it's not really picking. Yeah, it's, it's very okay. Well, it's definitely British. Huh. I mean, that makes sense. She's yeah. she's from Britain. Yeah, generally that's how accents work. I don't drink coffee. You know, so I don't know. I, I could pick up on it that her American accent was not. I don't know. It's just little things that I notice in stuff like that where it's like, honestly, if she had a British accent. Did it only poke through when she was like, uh, when, when she, she kind of lost herself in the second act? Because I did hear a difference, but I thought that it was because she was uh, supposed to be like more. Like, it was kind of any time that she started to yell at any point. I kind of noticed it. Oh, I don't know. I didn't notice it then. It is what it is. But yeah. that's, that's really all I got to say about that. No. All right. Well, now to actually sign off. <laughs> uh, thanks for listening. We'll see be you next time. Yourself. Sure. Be true to yourself. Why not? You're welcome. Goodbye. Adios.